Hey there, Wendy here with Jazzy Doodle Designs and tonight's Wind Down Wednesday we're going to be discussing watercolor pencils and we're going to talk about the different types of watercolor pencils, we're going to talk about how to apply them, how to blend them, we're going to talk about how to use uh, water brushes and most importantly will these work in our adult coloring books especially books like Creative Haven. At the end I'll do a project using dollar store watercolor pencils so let's dive in. So first off I just have a few different colored pencils here. I have uh, Faber-Castell's uh, Aqua Grip Aquarelle which is I believe their student grade watercolor pencil. I have Distress Watercolor Pencil and Mustard Seed. This is from the Ranger Tim Holtz line. Um, these are, it says, made in Pakistan, and they are simply the dollar store. We went, I went to the Dollar Tree. My husband actually found these for me, and they were $3 for 24 watercolor pencils. So that's what I'm going to use in, in the project. I have some Derwent metallic watercolor pencils, and then I have Albrecht Durer, which is the artist grade line of colored pencils. I'll briefly go over, so the Distress watercolored pencils, what makes these unique is that they're woodless. This is just a paper coating. So when you sharpen these, you can actually save the shavings because it's a hundred percent pigment and you could put them in a water uh, colored tin and keep them and use them as watercolor paint. So as you can see, since the entire stick is nothing but pigment, you get quite a bit of, of watercolor. Now these run, they're $22 for a set of 12, I believe it is. They come in these these little tins here and they have an individual slot to hold them and I just swatched them out on some watercolor paper and there's three different sets that are available and I just have them in color family order and I don't know if he's going to be releasing more because he definitely has more um, colors in his line. So so we shall see. Otherwise they work much like any other watercolor pencil. The Derwent Metallic, those come in this tin. Quite honestly, I think these are terrible. They run about $1.60 a pencil, so they're like 20 bucks for this set. And they are absolute trash. Let me so to me there is nothing metallic about that I will activate it first of all this is quote yellow to me that is green and once again nothing metallic about it so i don't recommend those and i'm a derwent fan i love their ink tents line which i am going to do a special ink tents uh, video specifically on ink tents even though they're a water soluble pencil this is watercolor and so i'm not going to do it so i'm going to set this one aside so the albert Durer's they run, you know, I just went on Amazon and checked. They're $31 uh, for 24 pencils, and so that's $1.30 a pencil. This unknown is $3 for 24 pencils, so these are $0.13. Cents. These run $22, so they're $0.90 cents a pencil just to give you a little heads up but one of the things I want to talk about is 
on the one hand, you can make great art with cheap pencils. There's, there's no doubt about it. However, it's all about how much easier it is. So as an example, I am going to make this square and I'm going to go over it three different ways to really fill it in, right, with this dollar store pencil. And as you can see, that's a beautiful color. But for the Albrecht Tours, I am going to very lightly make a share, a square of roughly the same size, but you can see hardly went over it. We're going to activate I apologize for the banging. The hubs is home and he's cleaning the garage and the garage kind of backs into my office. So please ignore. So as you can see, you, you get watercolor and it's a pretty color, but I went over that a lot. Now for the Albrecht Durer, you can see just with that tiny amount, how much more pigment actually comes out. I didn't have to work as hard and it's even a little more visual. I mean, like you can see the difference. Can you make good art with cheap pencils? Absolutely but you're gonna to have to work a little bit harder. Let's talk about how to use these. So we have a couple of different options. You can use these dry, just like we did here. You could color a whole picture, just like you would colored pencils. You can go in and you can apply them like a colored pencil and then activate them using water. you can take your water brush and rub it directly on the pencil, pick up a little color and paint it onto your picture like this. And the more, you know, the more you rub with a little water, the more intense your color, or you can squeeze your water brush and really get a lot of water going and make more of a wash. So that's another way that you can do it. You can also use a palette like this one. This is from Caran It's actually clean. It becomes stained when you use it with certain mediums but you can just scratch on to your palette, add some water, and paint it on. Now, if you don't have a palette like that, you can take, this is just cardstock or this is um, watercolor paper. You can actually apply your pigment directly to your paper and use it this way. So why would you want to do that? Well, a couple of different reasons. One, let's say that you're going on a short trip to pick up your kids. Um, from soccer practice or whatever. You could bring your colored coloring book and you could scratch off your pigment onto some paper in several different colors and then just take this and a water brush with you and you could actually do a small project in the car or 
you know, while you're waiting and not have to lug all your pencils and different things. So that is, that is one way that you could do that. The other advantage that you have by using a palette system is, let me grab another color. Let's grab, let's grab this uh, middle purple pink. And let's put this down and using that same yellow and now this pink, I can mix my own color. And I lay it down and I say, ah, oh, that's a little too red. So then I add a little more yellow and I get this nice orange and I say, well, maybe something in between that. So I mix those two together and create yet another color. So this is a great way, like if you were working on flowers, if you wanted a similar palette or a cohesive feel to your piece is you can create these custom colors, but because they all have the same colors in them, they will look really nice on your page together. together. So this is something that you could do. Um, like I said, you know, you could start out with your, with your yellow, maybe, You've got your petal going here, and you've got this yellow petal. And then you can just pick up a little bit of this color and drop it in here. If you want the watercolor look, you can do it while it's wet. If you want a more uh, distinct color, we can wait until this dries and you can pick up your darker tones and go in and it won't, um, it won't have this watercolor look. It will be more distinct or you can come in uh, if this was our petal and actually add your lines and your shading this way. And then activate this if you so desire. And you can see that this doesn't create that orange as much as applying it wet does. By applying it dry and then wetting it, you get less blending than if you just go in and apply it while it's wet. So, that's some of the ways that you can um, you can use it. You can go in and wet your paper and if you go in directly you can get some kind of watercolor effects. Now bear in mind that if you do this, you will never be able to get, you won't be able to blend those lines out, no matter how much we scrub. So that brings me to one of the, there's a couple of different things that I learned that were very helpful for me with watercolor pencils. One is you don't want to mark too hard. Anytime you go in and you make a real hard mark, no matter how much you blend, and I've blended all that pigment out pretty well, and I can make it really thin, but you can still see that line. Whereas if you go in and you make um, a line, maybe making it like lighter strokes, a couple of them, then when I go in, and I blend this out. Look how beautifully all of that pigment blends. And I basically have the same look, but no, no harsh line there. These, the Albrecht drawers just blend beautifully. I will show you, um, with the dollar store, you have the same issue. 
I'll make a dark line and then a softer line here. So with our dark line, you still see that same line. Whereas when you go in and just do a lighter one, you can pretty much eliminate your lines altogether. So that's the first thing. The second thing I'll tell you, and I'll use the pink just so it shows up a little bit more, is that I, when I first started playing with these, I was doing it wrong. So let's say I wanted a gradient and I wanted a darker color up here at the top and I want it to fade down um, to nothing. Our instinct is to go straight into our color, right? And start blending this out and then we blend it down and we just keep blending, right? And we get, we get a gradient here, but what you end up with is you end up with dark, medium, light. There's no gradient really. It's just, but if you start at the bottom where you have no pigment and you start working your way up and you're pushing into your color, Look at the difference that you get. You get that nice pop of color up here at the top, and then you can kind of fiddle with it a little bit if you want to bring more color down. Um, if you feel like you need it to go a little farther, um, but you get a much softer transition of color. And a little bit more saturation up at the top and this while it doesn't seem like a lot here it really does make a big difference I'm gonna do that one more time just to make sure I was in camera. So when you start at the top and you work your way down, you are bringing color with you. And you end up with your color up here and then it fades down. And you can kind of fiddle with it a little bit, but you're always, to me, it's, there's no gradual fade. Whereas if you come from the bottom and push your way into the color, you get a better blend and you get a lot more, um, a nice, not just a straight line of color like you have here or or sometimes this can get washed out up here at the top because you've blended down but here you just get that nice saturation going up and you have a lot more wiggle room once you get to the top if you want to play with it So those are some of the ways you can tell on cardstock here or watercolor paper, it's not going to go through. So let's take a look at Country Gardens coloring book. So this is a Creative Haven. It's a Teresa Goodrich. I did this page. Back you out just a little to get the whole page. So I did this entire 
project with these $3 pencils. I think it came out, I think it came out nice. It's, it's a pretty painting. Um, there is a little bit of crinkle, so you're going to get a little wiggle. Now, I have heard people say that they iron it and that kind of stuff. I didn't do anything really to this. So you can definitely use this. If this if you can use it on this paper, you can do this technique in any paper. So let's talk about blending a little bit. So to blend two colors, we're going to come in with our color number one. Then we're going to do a light transition area that needs to be lighter than our initial lay down. Then we come in with our second color on the other end and we're going to do a heavier layer of the second color and then a light wash or a light lay down over this initial area. And taking our brush, making sure that it's clean, we're going to start from our lightest area. We're going to activate and we're going to push into our color. Going ahead and pushing into our deeper color. Clean our brush and then you can kind of tidy um, any transition lines that you have here. You can soften those up a little if you'd like. But the darker color can handle the push from dark to light. But just like what we were talking about earlier, if we take our light color and we do the exact same thing, we do our light wash, we have our heavier color there, heavier color here on the end, and a transition. And I'm going to even use less blue this time. But if we start from our darker end and we push into that transition, get a little water going here, and we push into our transition, it is going to overwhelm our yellow and no matter how far out I take it, it's always going to have that tinge of green to it. So you always want to start with your lighter color. Another way that you can blend is you can actually, if you just want to create a color, you can blend it by activating. So taking your yellow, making sure your brush is clean. You can activate that, let it dry, and then we can add our second color. Or we can go in while it's dry, we can add in our second color while it's dry. You can already see it starting to create that color. And then when I activate this, it blends during the activation. Now this is completely dry. I go in with my blue, add it over the top. And as I activate, it too will change. So imagine that this is a leaf and we've colored it in with our our main color there, we could come in and just add a little bit here to the, the part where we want to deepen the color or maybe change our color. But the key is we're going to come in from our lighter end and we're going to push into that color. If 
from the lighter end. And then you can determine how much you want to soften that color or if you want to leave a harder line. The last thing you can do is once once your, your color has dried, pretending this is a leaf, you can go in and you can add in some different strokes here. Now this is still just a touch wet. So let's look at it on this one where it's 100% dry. You can kind of see how much softer this is than this one. This one really retained the harder lines. Now I always have the choice of activating this if I wish or leaving it with the or leaving it dry. I could even come back in with a uh, a colored pencil and and put my lines in right over the top. So that is always an option as well. Now obviously we can't activate here like we can over here. But you have options. But the key with blending is whether you do it completely dry on dry or wet on wet, you can even go in and mix your colors this way by putting a layer down here. And while that's still wet, you could come in and lay down another color on top and mix it that way. So there's a lot of different ways that you can go about making your blends. So let's talk about water brushes themselves. So I just got this pack of six from Arteza and I haven't used them yet. So we'll, we'll see, but as you can tell, there's a variety of sizes. There's three different size flats and then a large medium and a small round. This one is from Shakira. This is my favorite. I feel like it gives me the best control of water. A little fun fact though, this one, my whole life, everything's been righty tidy, lefty loosey. So you would think that you would, um, you know, you would turn it this way to loosen it, but it's not, it turns the opposite way. And you don't even want to know how long it took me to figure that out. Um, this one is from Kuretake. And they all work the same. They have a little bit of water in them. And then when you want more water, you press, you push here, and then more water comes out. Some are more aggressive about that than others. This one is another Kuretake one. And then this one is a Pentel. I think it's called a Quash. I also like this one quite a bit. I recommend that you just try out different ones. These all work the same in that they have a push here. And if you watch, you can actually see the water push into and you can have drippage because water does come out. I think the misconception that people have about watercolor brushes is that they constantly need to be pushing. I very rarely push on these. Enough water comes out on its own for most projects. The only time you wanna give that little extra squeeze is if you're rinsing your brush really thoroughly. Like for example, I'm working on this pink and I do a bunch of stuff and I got pink just saturated in all the bristles and then I'm going to be working in yellow. You may want to give it a squeeze and a wipe and and just make sure that you're you're clean there. 
they will stain so like this one if you can tell there's absolutely no green coming off of this but it is stained uh, that's fine this one I just got and they say that as opposed to this where you just squeeze it this you squeeze one time and you get one drop of water now once again, I don't know how often you need to do that, but it literally comes out one drop at a time. So I can individually drop there. So we'll see. I like the feel of this in my hand. It is quite a bit bigger than some of these other ones. So that is something that you want to look at too, especially if you're, you know, depending on what you're going to be putting them in. But my main thing that I wanted to point out is that with all watercolor brushes, there, there is water coming out. Let me get some scrap printer paper because it's hard to tell on watercolor paper. But there is enough let me do this. Let's lay down some color here. And I'm going to dry off this brush. And then go in. And you can see that even though I just dried it off, I still have enough on the bristles to activate this. This is all I want. So wiping it off, there's still enough moisture to get the job done. I think too often time people go, oh, I need water. So they squeeze it and they've got their brush just saturated. And then they go in and you can see how much more water there is. And that's when you start getting the problems. So even on cardstock um, or watercolor paper, I should say, um, wiping it off and then going in, you can see that's all we need. Now, if I squeeze and I really get a lot of water going, I'm going to get this going on. which on watercolor paper is fine. But if you put this much water down on your Creative Havens book, you're going to have problems. And you can see my pencil is still pink. Brushing it off, maybe squeeze, get a drop of water. And now you can see it did stain it just ever so slightly pink, but nothing is coming off. So just know that with every pen, with every watercolor brush, I should say, when you have your color down, you can wipe your brush off and there's plenty of water there. If you get too much, wipe and go in. Wipe and go back. That's how you control the water. There's very little squeezing involved in this. So just to recap, the five keys to watercolor pencils are to use a small amount of water, work from light to dark, use light pressure and make no harsh lines, clean your brush often, and always between colors and let your layers dry before you add another layer. All right guys that's it for this week so thank you for joining me I hope you enjoyed your wine and next week we'll be talking about gel pens so I hope to see you there.